In this video, we'll try to understand what is dynamic programming, why is it better than recursion, and how to apply it. So, dynamic programming is a method of optimizing recursive functions. A function that calls itself is said to be recursive. Let's dive into it with an example. Consider this function which computes the nth Fibonacci number. As you can see, it takes only one parameter, n. Now, we initialize the base cases, that is, when n equal to 1 or n equal to 0, we know that the result would be 1, because the 0th and the first Fibonacci number is 1. Now, when n is greater than 1, we apply the Fibonacci rule, that is, the nth number would be equal to the n minus 1th plus n minus 2th. This would solve and terminate at n equal to 1 or n equal to 0, giving us the answer. This is the recursive solution. Now you might wonder what is wrong with this solution. It would give the right answer, but it also unfolds into a tree. That is, f of 5 splits into f of 4 and f of 3. Now, f of 4 and f of 3 are not known. So, it again calls f of 3 and f of 2 and this tree grows. The problem with this is that f of 3 is computed twice, f of 2 is computed thrice and f of 1 five times. This is a waste of computation. What dynamic programming does is it avoids these repeated computations. So instead of computing these values multiple times, we will store them. Let's see how we do that. There are two methods to do dynamic programming, tabulation and memoization. Tabulation is also known as the bottom-up approach. As the name suggests, we start at the bottom of the tree and move towards the top, giving us the answer. Let's see how it is implemented in this function. We have an array of size n. This array will store the values of the Fibonacci numbers. As done before, we can see that at 0 and 1, the value is initialized to 1. For any value greater than 1, we'll first compute the second Fibonacci number. Now we know the second Fibonacci number, so we'll calculate the third. This way we'll move up to n. Now, why this is better than this tree method is because from these two we are computing f of 2, then f of 3, then f of 4, then f of 5. So no computation is being repeated, everything is being computed once. Hence it improves the time complexity. Basically what we are doing is we are solving the longest branch of the recursive tree. In case of recursion, we have to solve the entire tree, but when we use dynamic programming, we have to solve only the longest branch. The second method to apply dynamic programming is memoization. This is known as the top-down approach. In this, we start at the top of the tree and move down to the bottom. For this, we need a global array. We have initialized a global array with value 0. What we are doing in this function fibmem is that when the parameter n is passed, we first check that the value stored at index n in the array is equal to 0 or not. If it is equal to 0, that means that this value has not been changed by us, hence we have not yet calculated it. But if it is not 0, this means that we have already calculated this value and we just need to return it. If it is not found, then this function calls fibmem with n minus 1 and fibmem with n minus 2 and adds them. This might look difficult, but this is simply what we are doing in tabulation done in the reverse. Let's see how. We pass 5 as argument in our fibmem function. Now since the array does not know the value of f of 5, it will call fibmem function with 4 and the fibmem function with 3. First, f of 4 would be solved. Now, again, as f of 4 is not committed to memory, f of 3 and f of 2 would be called. First, f of 3 would be solved. f of 2 is not in memory, f of 2 would be solved and we have the value of f of 1 and f of 0. So, we get the value of fibmem2. 
now we get the value of FibMem3. Since we have the value of FibMem3, now we will calculate FibMem2. But we already have the value of FibMem2, so we don't need to calculate it. Coming up to FibMem4, now we'll have to calculate FibMem3, but it is calculated here, so we again do not have to calculate it. Hence, we get FibMem5 without repeating any calculation. The difference between memoization and tabulation is that in tabulation, all the computation are occurring at that step only. But in memoization, we are deferring the computation. We are not performing the computation at that point. But when the tree starts to open, then we are performing all the computations. You might wonder when to use dynamic programming to solve a problem. Well, there are two simple conditions to check if a problem can be solved by dynamic programming. The first one is overlapping subproblem. This means that the same subproblem needs to be solved again and again. In our recursion tree, we saw that f of 3 occurred twice and f of 2 occurred thrice. This means that the same computation has to be done multiple times. If f of 3 and f of 2 would not have been repeated, then remembering the values would not have helped improving the complexity. Second condition is optimal substructure. The optimal solution of the given problem should be obtained by using optimal solution of its subproblems. What this means is like your problem is to calculate f of 5. Subproblems are f of 4, f of 3, f of 2, etc. So if you can express f of 5 in any expression involving f of 4, f of 3, f of 2, f of 1, f of 0, then the function can be optimally represented in the form of its subproblems. If f of 5 could not have been broken down in terms of f of 4, f of 3, then we could not have applied dynamic programming to this problem. Now you might wonder, now that we know dynamic programming is better, let's compare their complexities. The recurrence equation for Fibonacci numbers is this is the recurrence equation for Fibonacci numbers what this means is the number of steps required for n is equal to the sum of the number of steps required for n minus 1 and n minus 2 if you continue solving this placing the values you will find that the complexity is some constant multiplied by 2 raised to the power n this is known as an exponential time complexity. In case of dynamic programming, we see that since no computation is repeated for the number n, n computation needs to be carried out. The recurrence equation for this is, this solves to constant multiplied by n. This has linear time complexity. Now, when you have a recursive problem, how to convert it into dynamic programming? Number one, check if it follows the above condition, the overlapping subproblem and optimal substructure condition. Second, write out its recursion. The recursion of the Fibonacci is f of n equals f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. Now simply convert it into dynamic programming by storing the intermediate subproblem results. In our example, we did it by storing the results in an array. So if you are new to dynamic programming, what I would suggest is you write the recursive program. Write a recursive function for your problem and then convert it into dynamic programming by storing the values. That's basically it. Now that we have covered everything about dynamic programming, I would suggest that you move to problems like the coin change problem or the maximum substring problem for some more practice. With this video, you should be able to solve most of the competitive problems based on dynamic programming. Links to all the codes that we discussed are in the description. If you want videos on any particular topic, let me know in the comment section. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more such videos.